Hello, and welcome to the Pastor's Desk, a devotional series. I'm Pastor Brandon, and today's topic is the body of Christ. There are so many Christian, Christian denominations that one has to beg the question, where did it all go wrong? Why is there so much division in the body after countless warnings not to be divided? Well, the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy. And in war, divide and conquer is the most effective way of dismantling any enemy force. The devil has used this technique against the Christian church and has been defeating us in battles ever since. Yes, we shall win the war. Thankfully, we are in Jesus and we are on his side and he has already won for us. But we can also win many more battles as well. But we must join forces. We don't need to go rogue. We don't need to be vigilantes. We don't need to be secular militias. No, we need to be one gigantic force to be reckoned with. That is how we will accomplish our mission. That is how we will win more battles for the Lord. Not divided, not fighting against each other. The devil loves when we do that, by the way. What enemy force can sit back and laugh as their own teammates fight one another? It makes his job that much easier because he can just go and pick off the stragglers who are left, right? No, we must join forces. Think about this. When another Christian asks you what denomination you are in, the mood changes as if you are different denominations because there is a stigma attached to your particular denom denomination. I've heard preachers and I myself have talked about other denominations before. The Baptists do this or that. The Catholics do this or that. The Pentecostals do this or that. The uh, Methodists do this or that. So why not drop the denominational title and just call yourself a Christian? What more do you need to say than if there is a disagreement upon beliefs? It's against a brother to a brother and not some large entity, a denomination that you're coming against that can't be resolved, but it's between two brothers who are having different understanding on the, uh, the doctrine or the scripture's interpretation. No, if we just say, hey, I'm just a Christian, regular standard issue Christian, if we go back to the way it used to be, as we're going to get into this today, we see that that is what it was. They didn't have different denominations back then. It was just Christians. So why do we need to say I'm a Baptist? Or why does it? Why do we need to say I'm a Methodist or Catholic or uh, Pentecostal or Assemblies or Church of Christ or whatever? We just need to be Christians. And if you want to even get further into it, they were called followers of the way before that. So if you don't even like saying any of that, you can just say, I'm a follower of Jesus. What denomination are Oh, I'm just a follower of Jesus. I just love Jesus. He's my Lord. What more do you need to say? Who cares about the other things? Let's go ahead and get into the Word. Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 3 through 4. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called into one hope of your calling. Let's endeavor to keep the unity. Let's make that our mindset. Let's struggle to keep the unity instead of struggling to be divided. No, let's try our best to come back together. Oh, we don't agree on this. Oh, well, I love you anyway. Let's, let's get to the mission, okay? I've found that even amongst people in their own denomination, Everybody doesn't agree on every single thing, okay? So can't we have understanding with other brothers and say, I'm just going to pray for that person. They don't believe exactly how I do. I'm going to pray for them. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pray for myself too because I might be the one that's wrong. My interpretation might be wrong. Everything that I have ever been taught might be wrong. I have to have an open mind myself. 
I have to constantly study this word. Anytime somebody says that I'm wrong, I, oh, I better go fact check. I better go fact check with the Bible. I better go see if I'm right or if I'm wrong because I want to walk in truth. I want to speak truth. Not because I was taught a certain way. Not because I, I'm prideful and I want to make sure I'm right no matter what. But because I want to please God. Because I want to speak the truth. Because I know that that truth will help somebody else. You know, it started going wrong when we ignored these warnings. 1 Corinthians 1.10 Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. What happened? Obviously, there's been a disconnect from this scripture, right? Obviously, we said, hey, well, I don't agree with you, so I'm going to go form a church. And then somebody within that church says, hey, I don't agree with you, so I'm going to go form a church. And it just keeps spreading and spreading. And it, we have gotten out of hand, folks. And if you don't see that as a problem, you better change your mindset. Because I believe Jesus is coming back and he's expecting his body to be unified. And I believe he's expecting his bride to be in one piece, not separate. Matthew 15, 9. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You know, a lot of times we put more things into following Jesus than are supposed to be there. We have our own traditions on how a church service should be run and, and our own traditions on what how it should be. But no, we need to go back to the simplest format. Go back to Jesus and how he did things. That's how we need to run it. That's how we need to do things. Now, if, if we do have certain things that are different than another church, don't say what they're doing is wrong. For example, if they play three songs and you only play two, don't be like, well, at our church, we only play two. They're doing it wrong here. No, that's not the mindset we should have. Try to enjoy it. Try to enjoy that extra song. Or if they play five songs, or if they don't play any songs, but they preach the whole time. <laughs> Or if they just read the Bible out loud the whole time. Or if they just praise or, what, or whatever they do. If they just pray the whole time. Get behind it. Because they're serving the Lord. Romans 16, 17. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses. Contrary to the doctrines which you learn and avoid them. If there's somebody in your church body who is causing division. The Bible tells us to avoid that person because what will happen is they're going to say, whoa, I see what's happening here. People don't like this. People don't like when I cause division. I better stop because I'm starting to lose fellowship with my brethren. So I don't need to cause division. No, I need to bring brothers together, not separate. That's what the devil does. We need to be like Jesus. We need to bring each other together in love. We need to go back to simply this, Acts 11.26. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Christians. That's all we need. What are you? I'm a Christian. What denomination are you? I'm just a regular Christian. I'm just the Christians that were in the Bible. I don't need a denomination attached to Christian. You know what a denomination does? It shifts the focus on Christ to your denomination. When you say, I'm a Christian, people are focused on Christ. But when you say, I'm a Baptist, now what are they focused on? What Baptists believe? If you say you're a Pentecostal, what do people say? Oh, what Pentecostals believe? They're not focused on Christ anymore. Now they're trying to cut down your organization. Now they're trying to cut down your belief system. If you say, hey, I'm just a Christian, what can they think about other than Jesus? That is what we need to be doing, Christians. That is who we need to be. Drop those other denominational titles. You can still go to a Baptist church if you want to. You can still go to wherever, but drop that title. 
Next time somebody says, what are you? Just say, I'm a Christian. Yeah, but where do you go? What, what I mean? Yeah, I might go to a Baptist church, but I'm a Christian. That is who I am. That is what I do. 1 Peter 4.16, Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. Let me replace that. If anyone suffers as a Catholic, let him not be ashamed. Oh, wait, it doesn't say that. Yet if anyone suffers as a Baptist, oh, wait, it doesn't say that. If anyone suffers as a Methodist, it doesn't say that. Pentecostal, assembly, church of Christ, and on and on and on. It says, as a Christian. God wants us to just claim to be a Christian. Did he say, hey, yeah, y'all set up all kinds of different denominations. Y'all be divided. If he would have said that, then that's okay. But no, he did not say that. He said, y'all be unified. That's what he said. That's what we need to do. And if we don't, that is disobedience. And that is sin. That is sin. Yes, I said it. When we are divided against each other, that is sin. Now, if that doesn't scare you, I don't know what will. We don't need to be living in sin against our Lord. If he tells us to be unified, then well, that's what we better be doing. Acts 26, 28, then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost per persuaded me to become a Christian. Now, did I hear any denomination titles there? No, I didn't. Did you? No, he said, he is persuaded to become a Christian. Do you know that other, other groups and other uh, religions are mostly unified? Mostly. And when atheists see Christian, why, why would I want to be a Christian? Y'all can't even get it together. I've heard that before. Y'all can't even get it right. Y'all don't even agree with one another. Y'all are so separated. And they're right. Approximately 41,000 Christian denominations are current. There's about that many. That is horrifying. We started out in one accord. We started out in one group. Now there's 41,000 pieces. Let's get back to that. Let's get back to one accord. According to some estimates, there are roughly 4,200 religions in the world. So there's only 4,200 religions. And we're sitting at 41,000 denominations. We surpass all the other religions in the world just by our denominations. This should be making you sick right now. We should have an active effort into trying to unify the body of Christ. Do I disagree with certain of these other denominations? Of course I do. I don't agree with everybody's thought process. I don't agree with everybody who comes to our church. <laughs> I don't agree with some of the things I say sometimes. I'll go back and I'll watch a video that I've done a long time ago and I'll ooh, I disagree with that. We should be constantly changing. We should be constantly getting closer and closer to the truth. But I'll go ahead and end it with this scripture. John 17, 11. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, and they, that they may be one as we are one. Let that be my plea to you. As Jesus' plea to his Father, let them be one as we are one, Father. Let us be one, brethren. If you claim to be a Christian, claim nothing else. I am a Christian, and that is it. And let us be unified on that foundation of Jesus Christ. Let that be our starting point. You may disagree with me on some of the doctrines that I believe. That's fine. I'm praying that God will correct us both. But let's get together and let's do the work that needs to be done. Not fighting against one another. No, we have a common enemy. And that enemy is Satan and his demons. And they are unified. They are one force. And they are going to pick us off if we allow them to. But if we join together, they're going to be on the run. Because our numbers out, outmass theirs. And if you add the holy angels on our side, whoo, they better step back. And if you add Jesus Christ on our side, whoo, they better step back. 
And if you add the Holy Spirit on our side, ooh, they better step back. And if you add the Holy Father on our side, they have no chance because they have already lost. We must join together. Join forces. And matter of fact, I'm praying right now that you send this to everybody you know who is a Christian. Not because I can get likes, not because I want the shares, not because I can get any money out of this deal. No, because I want to see God's church unified. And in the name of Jesus, that is what I'm praying for today. Unification of God's body, God's church, God's bride. In Jesus' holy name, I pray that you answer this prayer for us all today. And if you're watching this video, I pray that you pray along with me, that we can see that in our time. The unification of the brethren, like it was always meant to be. I pray you got something good out of this. God bless you. Stay tuned to the next one. See you later.